recording for those who aren't yet. Let's see how are we doing. Today we're starting a brand new section, quite an exciting section. Well, let's just put it, I'm excited and at my age it takes a lot to excite me. We're going to be doing a combination of two things, organic chemistry and intermolecular forces. Okay, I've never seen it taught quite like this, but we're doing two things at the same time because obviously we've got, to, we've got time as a slight problem, but they also go very nicely together. Now, you guys have done covalent and ionic bonding. Everyone know covalent and ionic bonding? Right? Um, now, in the old days, they used to think that everything was made up of, I think, four elements. I know fire was one, wind, water, I think, and earth. Maybe those were the four. And they thought that everything that existed was a combination of those four. But, you know, you could very easily, in one afternoon, sit down and think. Wind and water, fire and ice, wind, water, fire, earth, fire, and you very quickly run out of combination. So in theory, you should only get about 25 different things. Morning. You should only get about 25 different things existing on Earth if the ancient Greeks are thinking after thinking. You know, these Greeks were supposed to be such great thinkers. But you don't have to think for that long to figure out there must be more than just four elements. Okay, so you guys didn't figure it out, I didn't figure it out, there's over 220 elements on the periodic table. Start recombining them, you get different combinations. So what is the longest molecule you guys can think of? Why don't you just put up a hand, think of the longest molecule you can think of that you've done so far. And I'll write its formula down now, guarantee it's not going to be longer than about 10. <coughs> Sorry? DNA. Okay, that's there on, but you, that's where I'm going, but out of the science, organic chemistry, what's the longest molecule you've ever seen? <laughs> Probably something like Oish. calcium carbonate. Yeah, okay. Something like this, CaCO3. So you count up one, two plus three equals five atoms. And you know, they don't get much longer than that. Or vinegar, okay? So now, what I'm going on to is organic chemistry. So as you mentioned, when you get to organic chemistry, now the numbers start cranking up and we get longer and longer. So I was thinking, what is the longest organic molecule I know? That's the one you mentioned. DNA. You've all heard of DNA? We've got cells of the body. They've all got DNA. Just say that again. Glucose. Glucose is only in this. C12, H24. O twelve. Oh sorry, are you talking about glucose? Okay, that would be table sugar. Glucose is C six eight twelve oh six. Did somebody say it wrong? 
So they, so those are not very long. So if you, so I was thinking, what is the longest molecule I know? And the yes, the longest I know is DNA. So I looked it up here on um, Google, and it says that one cell's DNA stretches for two meters. So we've got forty-six chromosomes. So it'd be two meters divided by forty-six, and that would give you the length of the average chromosome. So that's going to be tiny, a couple of centimeters. Okay. So that would be about the longest molecule that I can think of. It must be longer. So um, why does the length of a molecule matter? Well, if you've got small little molecules, like these, um, what holds them together? Because they themselves have not intermolecular forces, but chemical bonds or intramolecular forces. Let's just write that down. Let's just say the following. Let's say. So let's say covalent and ionic bonding are intra TRA molecular forces, meaning inside the molecule, holding the molecule together. Today we're going to say what holds many molecules together. So the total length of the, these intramolecular forces is only going to hold tiny dust-sized things together. So if we had to say, let's have an intra-school sports, it's going to be Milton versus whatever the name, Rhodes, or whatever your houses are. And you're going to have this house versus that house. That is intra school. Intra means Greek, Latin, inside. But we are going to talk today about intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are inside or outside the molecule? Outside. Molecules holding many molecules together. And for your purposes, you only need to know three for matric. And that's what our crack will be on next week. So we'll go over those three. But before we do, we we're going to be doing it on organic molecules. So we need to get you some knowledge of organic molecules. Sure. So, so, do you have, um, so, so that inside the molecule holding, what is the name? Holding, holding many. Forces are outside molecules holding many molecules together. What is that? Holding many molecules together. Okay. So today we're going to look at the types of forces holding many molecules together. So what would life be like if we didn't have intermolecular forces? Well, let's see. I don't know if my camera is going to be able to pick that up, but let's try turning this around. And... Um, I'm not sure what it's focusing on, but let's try that. So, let's suppose these are molecules. Molecule, molecule, got four molecules. We put them together, and you see what happens. They just roll apart. 
you try to heat them up, they still fall apart. So, that would be a world without any intermolecular forces. It'd be a world where everything falls apart and it doesn't even form one layer. It just forms many little balls of molecules lying in the depth. So that would be a very poor world. Yeah, just to, I don't want to make this stuff, but uh, I don't want to get this stuff all over the place, but this would be closer to what a world without intermolecular forces would look like. It would just be molecules lying inside a trough, forming nothing of, there'd be no shape, there'd be, that if you open this, they'd all flow outwards, there'd be nothing, no height, there'd be no holding together like this, they would just keep on spreading, the wind would blow them away. These, in fact, have got a slight intermolecular force or electrostatic force. They tend to hold each other. But we're getting closer to what a world without uh, intermolecular forces would look like. So, let's get back to the story of organic chemistry because I want to talk about intermolecular forces in organic molecules. Does that look like it's focused on the board? Okay, thank you. So, we start our career in organic chemistry. What is organic chemistry? So now we first of all are going to start building nice and long molecules. But we're building them with intermolecular forces. Hello, Mary. Sorry, sorry. Mr. Thomas, the cat teacher, Ms. Rhodes, and yourself just need to talk about your master plan for the matrix. You will know what it's about. Okay, and if you don't, then I'm glad that I can tickle your brain this morning. I have no master plan for my matrix. No, no. Except that they pass. No, except for that, there's a little bit of an out of the box that both of you came up with. But um, don't worry, you just talk to her before you, you um, go home today. Ms. And Rose. she will Ms. Ms. Rose. Rose. Okay. Because she, the two of you, came up with this master idea for the matrix. Can you tell me what the no, idea was? No, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Do it because you might do it. Spoil. He's because now I've got it. He, he, Mr. Thomas is intrigued now. Can you see it, guys? What is this about? Yeah, but what? you know, he's what? also what? old, I'm so he's a teacher. Can you see, Goliath, what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I light up. So you know that that um, mask, mm. they bite at Holy Cart, no? Yeah. I laughed once so hard. I laughed so hard in that shop. I can't believe the stuff that they put on baby clothes, honestly. But, <laughs> but sir, will you please touch face with the cat teacher so that you I'll can... I'll tell you what, if they remind me at the end of this lesson to touch bases with her, I'll touch bases. That is right. That's because I've forgotten my idea and you I'm probably going to forget. Will you? You're going to tell sir, sir, the cat teacher. Before I leave. Oh, okay. Right I might be so excited about going home, I might forget. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so please remind me, I will forget. Um, so, we, we're talking, sorry, uh, we're going to make longer molecules with intramolecular forces first, and then we're going to join those longer molecules with intermolecular forces. Okay, so when God sat down and thought out his master plan, he thought, let's have an element that combines with a lot of things and can join a lot of stuff together. And he came up with the element carbon. Now carbon is a unique point, element because carbon has got four hooks or valency of four. And that means you can join carbon together and infinitum. Well, you can do that with a two, you can do that with oxygen. You can join oxygen together like this, but then you couldn't add things to it. So what makes carbon so interesting is not only can you join all the carbons together, but you can add stuff to the edges of it, and that will change its nature. So you can change its length to any length, and you can add stuff that makes it interesting. So now, just think of the possibilities. 
of endless long chains of carbon, and now we can have many more properties than earth, wind, water, and ice, or whatever the four the Greeks came up with. We can have each chain, as its length increases, we're going to look at it, get slightly different properties. And that's what our practice is going to be about. Okay, so let's define what organic chemistry is. Organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon. Where's a bit of pink? Organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon. Now, you know, I know people say God knows everything. Oh, such ignorance. God had to think this all up. He didn't know everything. He still doesn't know everything. Sounds like, it sounds like some of you are going to say, But, and they think, oh, I'm going to defend God. I'm going to say he knows everything. He's omniscient, as so many religions say. No. God spent billions of years. You wonder, what does God do with all those billions of years he's been around? He's thinking up this stuff. That you come to class and learn about. You learn the tiniest little fraction of it. We all think we know so much, but in the end, we all know just a tiny, tiny, tiniest fraction of what God knows. But still God is learning. Yes, God learns. And God had to think this up, and he eventually came up with the idea of let's have an element that we can join together and add stuff to, and that will make a very interesting world. So we have what is called a carbon-based life form. Everything in the world is based on carbon. Now, maybe if we thought something different up, we could maybe have a silicon base, because that's also got four hooks. But if they send somewhere out looking for life on other planets, they look for carbon-based life. So they send a little instrument to look for carbon. And they drill into the soil, if they find something that looks like organized carbon, then maybe there was life. But again, there's no life out there. The only reason people think there's life out there is because they believe in evolution. And they say it all happened by chance here, so it could happen by chance there. But if it didn't happen by chance, it was created, then it only happened here. God doesn't have a planet B or a plan B. He has planet A, which is Earth. And it all happens here, and there's no life out there. So, they can look, but they're not going to find and if they find, well, then we know that God's got a plan B. And that's not going to do much for my faith to think, ah, if we stuff up, there's plan B. I've got another plan. No, we're the only plan. We're the master plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So to get back to organic chemistry, it's the chemistry of carbon. So what makes carbon so unique? It forms four bonds. Okay, meaning we can form long chains. Carbon is unique in that it forms four bonds. Now what do we say when something has four bonds? We say we use a scientific term, it's got a Begins with a V. Valence of four. And forms form long chain with interesting stuff around the chain. Now tell me, in theory, is there any reason why we can't 
carry on forever with a carbon chain. Can you see anything stopping us having a carbon chain that just goes on forever? I can't think of any reason, so I'm sure you could make a carbon chain that was forever long. Now they say that if you took all the DNA from one cell, it's two meters. If you took all the DNA from all of my cells, the billions and billions of cells, it would stretch to the sun and back 70 times. Or to Pluto and beyond. That's how long just the DNA in all my cells would be. That's what they um, will all say. Okay. So let's look at the first and simplest form of organic chemistry. So simplest is just carbon and hydrogen. Of carbon and hydrogen single bonded. So, what is the rule for this first group? Only carbon, only hydrogen, single bond. And these form the alkanes. So, I drew them on the top there. C4, C2H6, C3H8, C4H10, C5H12, C6H14, C7H16, C8H18. You see them there on the board? So I'm not going to redraw them. I take it you're going to draw it. Yeah, I know. This is the only color that writes DCP. That's why I've got my so you I'll see if I've got some color that's half good. So take the alkanes down that top row. If you've already taken it down, just label the top row the alkanes. Can you guys see a pattern in the carbons and hydrogens? Yes. I want you to look at them and see patterns. The pattern I'm wanting you to look at is how many hydrogens does each carbon normally have? Okay, so think and answer the question. On average, how many carbons, how many hydrogens does each carbon normally have? So that's the pattern you're looking for. L -8. We don't mind going up to C8. That's more or less as far as we go in school. Now you know guys, we always underestimate you, your abilities. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you the names of it and I'm going to ask you to learn. They actually each have a name. Mm -hmm. Underneath it I'm going to ask you to learn the names of all eight. So, when you draw these are the names. Me, E, Fane, E, Pro,
It goes like this. Me thane, me thane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane. Okay, so, me thane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane. So you're going to go and learn those, that song. Won't you draw the top ones? Give them their names and let's just for the hell of it learn them because you're going to desperately need to know them in matric the and many students still not give their names but when they get my song they all learn it What do you notice about the boiling points as the chain lengthens? Does it get bigger or smaller? It gets higher. So it's harder to boil it. By the time we get to octane, um, there it's 126. So in other words, it's above the boiling point of water. So you should already be learning something about intermolecular forces. Do you think boiling point means they're harder to shake apart or easier? What is a boiling point? It's where a liquid turns to a, a gas. The temperature at which a liquid turns to a gas. Now you'll get no marks for that in the trick, by the way, that definition. This is the definition you need to know. 
It's when the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. But then what is the vapor pressure? Let's write it down. So let's say, LK, let's try the blue thing. Um, let's say, as, is that better for you? That's not so good. I don't think. No, that's not good. You're welcome to go. So as the chains get longer, as the chains get longer, As the chains get longer, let's try this one. There we go. The intermolecular forces. Yes, greater. The intermolecular forces get greater, meaning. The molecules get stickier. Now, if you say that in the trick, they get stickier, you will get no marks. You've got to use, but I want you to first understand the concept of intermolecular forces and what is meant by stickier. So. Let's understand it and then we can explain it in terms like vapor pressure equals boiling point and so on. So you could see that for these, they're not sticky at all. They just don't stick together. So I forgot to bring some sand. Here's yeah, some salt or yeah, salt. Is the salt very sticky? Does it stick together? Not really. It just kind of falls apart. If it was dry, it would fall apart even more. But if I add just a touch of water like that to sand, maybe I can get it to stick in a ball. You see what I mean? Like wet sand sticks better. So maybe I can get it to stick in a little ball. So... That's what I mean by stickier. So, we've got a lot of concepts here. Um, so, the first concept we've got to understand is vapor pressure. So, if things stick together hard, they can't jump into the air. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. How much do I owe you? No, <laughs> okay. Thank you. So the more sticky things are, the less they want to jump into the air and vaporize. So let's say that. Let's say that. I think mine one might be different. More little. The stickier, the less likely they are to vaporize and jump into the air. Now this one's dying too. So thank you for getting it. Vapor pressure. occurs when molecules jump out of a liquid into the air. All sounds horribly unscientific, but <laughs> I want you to get the concept. 
Okay, so thing, things give off a vapor. When, so maybe, maybe I can smell that that is sunlight like soap. It's got a vapor. Yeah, I can smell it sunlight like soap. Why can I smell it? It's obviously going from here to my nose. It's creating a fog of molecules that have gone from a liquid state to a gaseous state. So, molecules have to go from a liquid to a gas to form a vapor. Good example. E.g. perfume. Molecules must go from a liquid to a gaseous state to form a vapor. Now let's go to your very good example of perfume. A girl's got her eye on this very attractive guy. She wants to get his attention. She doesn't know how she's going to get his attention. So she puts on some perfume and walks past him. He, he's sitting there minding his own business, happily unaware of her, and suddenly, oh, he noticed something different. Someone walked past him and he likes the smell. She's, a, she's achieved her goal, which is to get his attention. Now here's the question. Does she want a perfume with a high vapor pressure or a low vapor pressure? So the higher the vapor pressure, the quicker it will boil off her arm and go into the air. So a high vapor pressure means it boils off her arm quickly and easily and goes into the air. Let's write that. A high vapor pressure means, say, perfume What did I say? Say perfume um, Comes off easy? Boils off her arm very easy. At low temp. Easy. Okay. So that's vapor pressure. So come on girls, do you want the perfume to jump off you? If it stays on you, are you ever going to catch the guy? No. So it's got to have a vapor pressure. So what's the disadvantage of a high vapor pressure? You put it on you, it goes into the air, and then it's gone. So you will only walk past him once and he'll smell you once and then it's all poof, gone, it's vaporized. So you want vapor that sticks around, so you're going to put some molecules of low vapor pressure and some of high vapor pressure, but anyway you want to mix a perfume so that you don't have to keep putting it on every five minutes. So what do we notice? Um, so what do we notice? Now there's an inverse of vapor pressure. It's called boiling point. Boiling point is the inverse of vapor pressure. The higher your vapor pressure, the lower the temperature it boils at. So let's have a look here. Methane boils at minus 162 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. 
In other words, it never gets that cold on earth, but it's still boiling. Methane. Sounds wrong, but that's true. Then ethane, even at the poles, it doesn't go to minus 89, as far as I know, centigrade. This is all in centigrade. So even at the port poles, um, ethane will be a, will vaporize into a gas. Propane is that liquid, is that gas that you use for cooking. Propane. Butane is in cigarette lighters. Now notice butane is a liquid, turns from a liquid to a gas at minus one, or around a boiling point of water, the melting point of water, ice. So at the temperature of ice, but, uh, butane in your cigarette lighter is wanting to go from a liquid to a gas. And that is why it creates a vapor pressure. If I have a lighter and I flick it, my imaginary lighter out comes butane. So you pour, but, you, so you pour butane on ice, the ice is going to go ice. <laughs> if you pour it on ice, it's going to like very cold ice, like ice from your fridge, the butane will freeze. Oh. Oh, sorry, it will turn from a gas to a liquid. These we're talking about boiling point here. So you will just keep it at a liquid if you keep it on ice. But it won't turn into a solid at all. It only turns into a solid at a hugely lower temperature. So you pour your cigarette lighter liquid onto ice, it will just stay a liquid, but it won't solidify. But this is the reason why it turns to a gas, because we are room temperature, which is around today about 20 degrees, 23 average. And so butane is continually at this temperature wanting to be in one gas. So in what phase? Gas or liquid? Butane wants to be at room temperature at what phase? Gas. Because at minus one it turns from a liquid to a gas. So that's why it's trying to get out of the cigarette lighter. That's what creates the pressure in your cigarette lighter. You know when you open your propane bottle, it will go Pssst. It wants to get out because propane has already wanted to turn to a gas at minus 22. So it's desperate to get out of that bottle and become what it wants to be. What Disney says it can be all that it can be, which is a gas. And the bottle is keeping it all bottled up and stopping its potential coming out of being a gas. That's a terrible Disney plot. It must be free, like Nima, and become itself. Okay, so, and then we come to pentane and hexane which are now liquids in our world and we come to octane, high octane petrol, petrol is a liquid your petrol is not going to boil in your tank, it would be terrible if it did but if petrol gets close to the engine, the engine is very hot, sometimes your, uh, your petrol boils in the fuel pump and then you can't pump the liquid anymore okay so octane is actually petrol Petals, eight carbon chain organic compounds and longer. So look at them, take note of the boiling point. What is the vapor pressure here, high or low? High, because the boiling point is low, they're inversely proportional. Getting high, uh, lower vapor pressure, higher boiling point as we go to the right. Now, this is the practical that I'm going to give you. I want you to figure out, first of all, how do all of those alkanes differ by? As they get longer, how much do they differ by? They differ by one, one carbon, and each carbon in the chain has got how many hydrogen? carbon in the chain has got two hydrogen. That's why I want you to ignore this one and this one, because we only start to form a chain with those two. The first one's not a chain. The second one is all ends, right? The ends have got two. But the actual chain is this. Now that just keeps on repeating carbon. So each carbon is just adding a carbon and a hydrogen. And so that 
is the unit that keeps on adding. Does that make sense to you? Makes sense. Okay, so each chain varies by by twelve and two minus two. They're inversely proportional. Please get that, guys. Boiling point and the vapor pressure inversely proportional. Look, I've run out of board space here. I need to just focus on this for a moment. And then when we... Then maybe you can do something else. Okay. I'll write that on the board. You don't have to worry. But. So now, let's establish, guys. Each chain is simply adding in the middle between the N carbons, which is about three hydrogen, which is unique, a carbon and two hydrogen. That's how all chains start adding on. Okay? Okay? Now here's the next question. Do you think it's the carbon that adds the stickiness to the molecule, or do you think it's the hydrogen? What do you think makes the chain stickier, the hydrogen or the carbon? So, let's say that to me? The outside or the inside? It's too windy. I don't want to stick blowing the, the hurricane here. But, you know, if, you, if it's not windy and you stick a little piece to you, it will stick with the blowing. Do you think it's the outside of the molecule or the inside of the molecule that adds the stickiness? The outside. The carbon adds no stickiness. Only the hydrogens add to the stickiness. So every time we add two hydrogens, this is now your practical. How much stickiness in the green centigrade does each hydrogen add? Okay, let's ignore the first two because those are just forming the, the end of the molecule. Now let's go from propane on. From there to there, change by about 42. Between there and there, change by 41. But between there and there, change by 37. Between there and there, change by 36. Between there and there, get to change by about 50 as well. So, you see, 72 heights and adds approximately how much to the boiling point. Each two as uh the And I want you to work out there for the right like to find out how much each hydrogen adds to. Have we So what you're going to do is you're gonna go from there to there, you're gonna get a number, you're gonna write it in the column. There and there, write it in the column. There and there, there and there, go up to eight. Okay, now you get to twenty-six is only adding Fifty. Uh, sorry, and twenty-eight. Yeah. Getting slightly smaller, but it seems to be approximately fifteen that each hydrogen has, and it's slightly less than the top. Boy, that's all right. That's all you're going to do. That's all you're going to do. Got to be divided into two. We're going to push two this and push two this together so we can put that little piece in the middle of one 
there was one thing that I counted that how much stickiness does it give you? I didn't add a stickiness to the flip of boiling point. That's the best indicator of boiling point. Now, we come to, as I said, we'll put out a space, so now I'm going to talk here. We come to everybody, well, most people, some people, teens' favorite molecule the alcohols. Oh, what do we just pick up? Here is the drinking alcohol or ethanol. Now, let's have a look at the alcohols. Look at them. They only differ by having an O between the one carbon and the hydrogen. There's an O. The next one I'm going to draw is going to be C, 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 O, H. And then I'll be very bored of drawing hydrogen. So for the rest of the year, I'm not going to draw hydrogen, but you are. That is called, now, this is why I want you to learn the name. Methane, 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 octane. You see, I don't have to think about it. It's like a nursery rhyme. You must be the same way. Then we go, methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol, pentanol, hexanol, heptanol, octanol. So once we've learned the pattern, we can name all the alcohol. But now we come to a question. How much does the OH group, which is called a hydroxyl group, how much does this hydroxyl group add to the boiling point? How much does adding that O with the H add to the boiling point? That's the practical. And the third and only and last one, I'm going to maybe have a fourth one, depending on time. Okay, now we come to the, well, the, let's just call it this one now. I think otherwise we're going to just kill you. Here we have a group of things that have got the alcohol, but now we take those hydrogens off and we join them to double bond to one oxygen and we get our vinegars. Our acids, our organic acids. So they name the same way: methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid, butanoic, pentanoic, heptanoic, heptanoic, pentanoic, hexanoic, heptanoic, octanoic acid. All named the same. So once we've learned that, hey, we go. But then the question also becomes: How much does this? Add to the boiling point. So we want to compare. Once we found out how much that adds to those, let's find out how much that adds to these. And then we know all that used to know about intermolecular forces in molecules form of quick. So, do you think this OH is going to raise the boiling point? Lower the rate of quick? Let's have a look.
The stickier it is, the higher it's going to be for you. The more we have shaken, you can get it to fall apart and go into the head. So look at your alcohol. They are already very sticky. Look, that OH can add how many degrees to. There's your alcohol. There's your 2000 alcohol. There's your alkane. Now, where's my alkane? There. It's added at 140 degrees to. 140 degrees to the, the state boiling point if I add the other. So therefore we've added a lot of thickness. You see how we're looking at the properties? The intellectual also screens of alcohol are super high. Therefore they don't want to boil, they want to stick together. You shake them, you heat them, and only at around about the boiling point of water will your this one boil. You can you can put in you can boil it at that temperature. So I'm going to have that temperature and look at the temperature that the ethanol boils at 78 degrees. So you know the blue china is made out of and they boil it. And they separate the alcohol from the water. You see the alcohol boils to 78 degrees. So the first step is you've got a whole mat of alcohol and water and they make it out of maize or fruit. They then distill it and at 78 degrees your ethanol comes off. And your ethanol is that very mampu, that very high, this, 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 You know what I'm talking about? Mountain But now look, in, in the township and me, if I don't know what I'm doing, you know what I'm getting with? Methanol. At 65 degrees. Comes off first. That stuff will blind you. So now they they make us they don't sell us alcohol during lockdown. What do people do? They start brewing their own alcohol. So they get this alcohol, that alcohol, and that alcohol, all this stuff, and they start to disperse. That comes off first, they drink it, they go blind. Then they get the good stuff, ethanol. <laughs> then they get the protocol with the mixture of something. So what you do is you boil your mash and you throw it away into the rock. And you watch your temperature as it climbs to 78. Only when you are from that degree above 78 you start drinking what comes out of your distillation thing. So how do you do boiling points of waste of water? Okay. I don't think so. And then the last thing we're going to do is the oic acids. Now how much what if you add another one of uh, that to the boiling water? So just see the five in there. There's your oic acid. Look at their body point, it's gone up as well, but not as much as adding an OH. Look, it's gone up. That's what I'm adding the OH, this is what I'm adding just the O. It went from 97.2, it's about a quarter. It went up about a quarter degree. So I'm just adding that double one time. Probably, look here, between 64 and 80, it's gone up to 40 degrees. So if each hydrogen is what 50, each double bond O is about three times as much as a hydrogen. And the O H added, what is this? It added between the alcohol and this, it added 120 divided by 15 is oh, about 10. I'm just going to write about this now, but that's it. Okay. So, what must we do for the rest of this trip? Well, we've got a lot to do, but I think we So, let's draw all of those, name all of those, and then write a little bit about the boiling and the pressure relationship. 
and then put it up and tell me what you can do in your prep. Okay, let's, let's just begin to go all the way on. Okay, so this becomes methanol. This is ethanol. Propanol. Yes. Eutanol. No, the practical will be next week. You come in session on the 16th at 8.30 to be the first. You come at 8.30, you write it all up, you leave when you're looking up. Which will take you off of things. Um, I'm not the one who decides those things. Ask, I don't care what you come to. You can come in a big leaf for all I get, but check it out for the school authority. I love the way our subject advisor came into my matric class and she said, Look at this! Look at this child's hair! So, what do you think of that? I said, I don't care what his hair is like as long as he does his work. <laughs> Obviously, she notices his hair. I haven't even noticed his hair. Okay, guys, you're going to finish that off. You're going to show me before you go that you've drawn them all. Did everybody hear me? You're going to show me before you go that you've drawn them all. No, 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 no. You haven't drawn them all? No, 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 no. I'm telling you. You can make 50 miles of any color. 
Yeah, it's made from barley. Um, tequila is made, I think, of sugar cane, and yeah. that is rum. So I make some in the store. Yeah. <laughs> Grapes, so if you make um, ethanol wine. in wine. And then you get to the it's easy. 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 It's that you don't know about. You can get double alcohol. You can get double alcohol. Yeah. Uh, just in two classes of those days. In fact, you're going to use this one, which is glycerine, which is a triple alcohol. So, so this is propanol, but with three alcohols on each side. What is it? Uh, um, the second thing oh. is called the alcohol. <laughs> is the organic matter. Oh, that's the right thing that I've done now. So, do you want to go alcohol? Yeah. I used to do my own beer, yeah. <laughs> you buy a kit. You just, you just buy a kit from the hardware shop and you buy a big plastic bottle like this and you throw your malt and the boiling water and your malt. Oh. It's like a, it's like a, like a liquid from barley. It's a very sweet liquid. Wow. And you throw in your hops and then you have a little thing that allows the carbon dioxide to double up. So it doesn't allow the air back in the germ. You wait for that week to stop the bubbling, you bottle it. You don't need your own stuff. No, it's not a What is all the mm -hmm. alcohol? You bottle it, you leave it, you supposed to leave it for about three seven weeks. Days, it is rather rough tasting. Seven days. Seven days. But we used to knock it back and never used to last it to three weeks and then it tastes it better. Mm. It's like wine, if you drink it at first, it doesn't taste that good. How far is it not going to taste that? But I don't get excited about an alcohol at all in there. At all. But it's all good. You know that I always, you know, I always always to drink and drive. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why no, I never even thought about drinking and driving. We were all went out in the evening, we all drank ourselves, but then we all drove ourselves home. Okay? Uh, but one day I learned alcohol does impair your judgment. I'll tell you about that day just for the fun of it. One Sunday I drank and I was going to go to sleep. <laughs> but the weather looked good. So I pulled out my paraglider, I went to INT, I took off. I was flying. <laughs> my my judgment was impaired and blew me right over the back of my head and I ended up the paradigm and did this all the way down, it kept folding and unfolding and unfolding and folding. And eventually just before I landed in the blue dust tree, it opened up and that's why I'm here today. Yeah, I would never do So I thought to myself, drinking and flying, now that's taking it a little bit far. <laughs> But drinking and driving, apparently mm. some people can't hold their alcohol.
all fine. So if you are drawing your new instructions, you're going to draw on the 28th. You know, your test on the 28th. When you draw this, you're going to draw it like this. It's going to be carbon with a dot across. Okay, I take it everybody's got this down. And you're going to put it on two. Then, I know you guys can sanitize and listen at the same time. Then you're going to take some of this and you're going to put it across these two pins and you're going to see if you get um, does the light shine that shine the brightness of shining the pins will show you the conductivity of it or not Okay, so you're going to have to remember how brightly it shines. So that's your conductivity. Okay, so there you look at the LED just to see how bright it shines. So that's the one there. Um, uh, the one last one, we could also try and see if it dissolves in oil. So things tend to be either oil soluble or fat soluble. So let's just see if this glycerin dissolves in oil. So broadly speaking, everything can cook, you know, just like your paint. You get water soluble paint that you can wash off with a tap. Let's see if glycerin dissolves in oil. So if the two mixtures mix with no difference, then it's called oil soluble. So, so you've got to decide: has it formed a separate layer or not? I can't see a separate layer. So it's water and oil soluble. Now, if you just pour pure water in here, it's definitely those bubbles of water are going to stay separate. They're not going to mix. You can see definite bubbles there. That's water. Water and oil don't mix. But glycerin will dissolve both in water and on in fat. So, if I were to sanitize my hands, So therefore this, this is somewhere between water soluble and fat soluble. And in fact you can eat glycerin. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is the stuff you put on your skin. You cannot eat it if you burn your tongue and it. So lovely and sweet. Delicious. But don't do that with other chemicals. Yeah, only with that. But this stuff I use, I bought this at one stage. I was using it as a substitute for sugar. And um, then we're going to try 
here is methanol. That was that alcohol here. This is the stuff that makes you go blind. Can't smell it with that. Can't smell it with a lid on either. And it's about 98%. And then here is the good stuff, ethanol. The good stuff. The good stuff. So we'll do the same tests with these. Um, here's just glycerin, the same stuff bought in a bigger bottle. You can see it's like thick, viscous. And then here's petrol. Or hexane. Methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hex. Six carbons. So when you try the viscosity test on hexane, let's just see whether it's very thin or thick. You see, it, it's so thin that the drop has fallen off even before, you know, there's not even a drop that will fall off. It's in the liquid, there's a drop, but it's so thin and runny. And look how it's just super fresh. Okay. Um, all got to go? Bye. So you guys laugh at your memory. You also forgot to remind me. Every one of you forgot to remind me. <laughs>